Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to Player, player two, 2 First. I'm Player 2, and I'm Player 1. Hello everyone, welcome to a bit of a different episode today. Obviously, you see that it is just me here. And uh, we are going to be going into the mechanics of breeding a Pokemon. We are going to be seeing how the mechanics work, what different things you can do with a Pokemon, some of the ways that you can manipulate stats, and other um, different components of breeding a Pokemon. So, the Pokemon that we're obviously searching for on this route uh, is going to be a Ditto. Ditto is super important to breeding Pokemon. However, uh, we are also going to try to catch a Drowsy on this route. So, this Pokemon that we found, I hope I don't kill it. It should be very specially defensive, but it is a low level. It disabled my low kick and I was sad about it. But I do kill it, so we're going to Start over, catch a new Drowsy. We are looking for a Ditto and a Drowsy um, in order to start breeding our Pokemon. So we're going to make this work and let's, what is this? TM63 Embargo. So apparently we missed that item. And uh, so we are hunting for some Pokemon. Now, the reason that we have me here and not Dan is because we are not sure how long this episode is going to take to record. Breeding is a very long process it can take anywhere between 20 minutes and you're done all the way to two to three hours to get the pokemon that you're looking for and i've had those sessions before a lot of breeding is very monotonous it's much just a lot of going back and forth trying to get the eggs to hatch so we'll try to make that entertaining um i'll try to be explaining things as we go but as as far as it is going as far as it's concerned uh we are going to be uh getting this done in this episode. So I know that some of you guys probably want some progress, but at the end of this episode, you are going to see a really, really exciting new addition to our team. Um, I'm not going to spoil what it is quite yet, but some of you guys may know if you know why, uh, know how breeding works. And I am uh, really excited to introduce that Pokemon when the time comes. And at that point, once we have the new Pokemon all ready and bred up, we will get Dan back in here as it is his game to play through, and he will be nicknaming it um, and going from there. So, um, to start, uh, we had to record, we recorded this already once, and I found the Pokemon that I was looking for in the, the two Pokemon I needed in the first two encounters. Done. Caught them both. Was ready to go. The mic wasn't recording. Now the mic is, re is recording. Just checked. And, uh, now that means that I don't find the Pokemon I need ever. Um, but we are going to keep trying. Uh, I may have to run back to the mart and buy more balls at this point. Um, now there is a reason that I, I was catching this drowsy as opposed to the other drowsy. Uh, this drowsy is female. Females are great. So, you have a nickname to call drowsy? Sure. And we're going to name you... Beatrice. Great. Um, but we still... I mean, I caught a male drowsy just to be sure so that I didn't have to keep encountering drowsies, but I, I ran into a female one, so that's great. Oh, goodness. Where are you, Pokemon? Why can't I find you? Oh, there's an Abra. Uh, we agreed upon trying to catch an Abra if we found one, just because a lonely natured Abra sucks. Um, so we're just going to catch another one if we find it. And, uh, but I didn't catch it. So, right, be right back, guys. I'm going to go get some more balls, and I will just keep encountering things, so. Okay, so we're back and encountering things again. So the reason that this episode is the way that it is is because, like I said, breeding is a completely unpredictable process, um, and random encounters are obviously also a completely unpredictable process. Uh, I have no idea how many it's been so far, but uh, it's been like, it's been a little while. Oh my god, finally. Alright, so there is the Pokemon that we are looking for. It's a ditto. 
That took way too long. I'm not going to attack you right now. I'm just going to throw a quick ball at you to see if I can catch you. Um, obviously, it's the best catch rate on the first turn. If it doesn't catch it, I can always just, now that he transformed, uh, I can click moves and be fine. So I'm going to click Ice Punch. Possibly get the freeze. I don't think it should kill uh, a level 21 Elekid that is the same stats as me. Does not. Goes for the Fire Punch. Please Static, maybe? Static would be great. No Static. Um, anything else will probably kill it from here. So we're just going to throw some Great Balls at it. And hopefully we catch this Ditto, because we need this. This is important. We don't. Okay. Man, there's so much I want to talk about. But step one is having the ditto. That's important. Um, oh my god. All right, so... Uh, I'm going to pull my hair up by the end of the day. I'm sure you guys are excited about that. It's going to be an interesting interesting episode if this is the way it starts. I've had some terrible luck in the past. I'm sure I'll tell some stories about throughout the day um, with breeding. Um, so, but... I guess I'll go into it now. The way that breeding works and the reason that you want to breed a Pokemon instead of just randomly encountering a Pokemon is that a bred Pokemon can be sort of manipulated in its stats, in its nature, and things like that. So I can find the Pokemon that I want. Additionally, you can get really powerful moves as egg moves. So Hothead, for instance, has two egg moves. He has uh, Fire Punch and Ice Punch, which as you can see throughout this playthrough have been very, very useful. So you're going to be Breeder Ditto. And so we are going to be giving egg moves to the Pokemon that we are going to be uh, getting. And the Pokemon that we are going to be getting is not a Drowsy. However, I needed a Drowsy in order to get it. Uh, you want to go in the door? I needed a Drowsy in order to get this Pokemon. So I will be uh, getting the actual Pokemon that will be a part of our team right about soon. And once we have the Pokemon that I'm going to be using to breed, then I will be uh, actually explaining some of the stuff that I will be breeding and how that works and the mechanics behind that. So we need this guy right over here. Collect Pokemon, do you have a Drowsy? You want to trade it for my Machop? Yes, I do. So, interestingly, I probably should have checked, um, but I'm not going to. Uh, interestingly, the Pokemon that you trade him will actually be... Um, manipulating the Pokemon that you get from him. So the nature, I believe, of the Pokemon that I'm trading to him, as well as the level, um, and I think the gender, will all be the same as the Pokemon I trade to him. So I wanted a female Machop, so I wanted a female Drowsy. This Machop will be coming at level 10. Um, and I didn't check the Drowsy's nature, but I believe it will have the same nature as the Drowsy. So, um... Now, this could, you could just use this Machop. Obviously, getting a traded Pokemon is great. You get bonus experience and stuff from it. But, um, at the same time, Machop is a really cool Pokemon. I love Machamp, but it doesn't have the, uh, type cover move coverage that it, we'd want it to have. So, and so we are gonna be training this Machop. So let's take a look at Muscle, the Machop. He's holding a Macho Brace. I'll take that. You don't need that right now. Um, and I will take that, and we can take a look at Machop. Machop is a lonely-natured Machop, which isn't terrible um but there's nothing i can i'm not going to be able to manipulate the natures at present so i'm not gonna worry about it but as you can see it is a female machop because it was a female uh drowsy that i traded over and that's really important so um we are going to be now making our way down to the pokemon center freeing up some space in the party um and getting things squared away so I'll meet you guys back at the Pokemon Center um, and show you what the party looks like at that point. That way you guys can uh, get a view of things. All right, guys, so this is what the party looks like right now. As you can see, we actually have a Magmar, which I'll explain why we have a Magmar in a minute. And we have a Hitmonchan and no Ditto right now. Ditto will be coming into handy later. But the reason that we have this Hitmonchan is this Hitmonchan knows the moves that we want to breed onto the Machop. So that's how egg moves work. The male Pokemon, as you can see, Hitmonchan is the male, will always breed the moves down that it knows that are eligible egg moves to the new Pokemon of the female. The Pokemon will always be the female's type when it is hatched out of the egg. So the mom, 
is a Machop in this case, so we will be able to breed Machops no matter what. And the Hitmonchan will be breeding on its moves. So what we're going to do first is get these moves onto a new Mach Machop. Um, and uh, the reason that we have a Magmar in the party is if you have a Pokemon with Flash Fire or Flame Body, it doubles every uh, time, every Egg Cycle. So an Egg Cycle is 255 steps. And every 255 steps, it goes down by one. And each Pokemon has a specific number of Egg Cycles that it is required to have um, in order to hatch out of an egg. Different Pokemon have different amounts. The rarer or more valuable Pokemon, such as the pseudo-legendaries like Dratini and uh, Beldum and stuff like that, have many egg cycles, whereas Pokemon like Magikarp have many fewer egg cycles. And so um, the first thing that we're going to need to do is put those in the daycare and wait for the daycare man to call, saying that he has an egg. So I will cut back to when he says that, and because uh, it'll take me a minute to get that going. All right, guys, so we're back, and you can see that the Daycare Man is calling, but we actually know. So the Daycare Man is facing outwards in Gen 4, or in the Heart Gold Soul Silver games like this. If he's facing away from his house like this, then you know he has an egg. If he's facing downwards, then he does not have an egg for you. So we don't even need to answer the call. We know he has an egg. Ah, oh, it's you. We were raising your Pokemon. Oh my goodness, we were surprised. Your Pokemon's holding an egg. We know you do we don't know how it got there, but your Pokemon had it. You do want it, don't you? Of course I do. So in this case, the first thing we're going to do is obviously just take the egg. And we're going to let him... Um, uh, yes, great. You can call me on phone if my Pokemon is holding an egg. That's fine. Um, so we are going to kind of get a, a view of what this Pokemon's nature is and stuff like that. I'm not going to worry too much about the IVs of the Pokemon, but I will explain now as we're trying to hatch this egg what IVs do and what natures do. Now, as I have mentioned before, there are 25 different natures. Each nature raises one stat by 10% at the cost of lowering another stat by 10%. And... Uh, so what the natures that we... Oh, the bike shop's calling. <laughs> Gotta answer that. Oh, hey, this is the bike shop. We've been selling a lot of bikes lately. This because you've been riding around that bike advertising. We haven't gone anywhere. We've literally just been riding around Goldenrod, but I guess that makes sense. You know, advertise in the region that you're going to be making the sales in. Um, anyway, so the um, natures that we're looking for are something that raises attack and lowers special attack, um, particularly, and in this case, that is adamant. So... We are going to be literally sitting here breeding eggs until we get an adamant Machop. Now, um, the reason I wanted the Ditto is because if you leave Pokemon in the daycare, they will actually uh, have their moves replaced by new moves that they're learning. And I don't actually want to leave the Machamp, or the Machamp, the Hitmonchan, in the daycare because I want it to keep its moves for later in case I ever choose to breed with it again. So I'll be switching it out with the Ditto later with a Machop that has the egg moves on it because it will pass down those egg moves at the time and then we'll be breeding for an adamant one at that point. But as of right now, we are just trying to get the uh, Machop to have the egg moves on it. So any one of these eggs will have all of the egg moves on it and I'll show that once one of them hatches. But you guys can see how this process is uh, going to take a little while. So uh, I explained a little bit about egg cycles. I got a little bit distracted by it. And so egg cycles... Um, when you have a Pokemon with Flash Fire or Flame Body, the egg cycles that it requires are cut in half. So these eggs will hatch twice as fast as they otherwise would, uh, which is obviously a good thing. Um, and we are very much going to be taking advantage of that because I don't want to take twice as long as I have to for this process. So um, that's definitely a part of the process. Now... Just to uh, keep you guys in the loop of how long this first egg takes, and obviously I'll be cutting out a lot of hatching after this, um, I'm just going to keep talking over this, and that way Dan can't cut it out for you, and you have to watch it! Haha! <laughs> so IVs are a another reason to breed, and they're harder to breed in this game than they are in future games, and I'll explain the differences in a second. In this game, you get uh, three random IVs passed down from the parents to the baby, uh, to the egg, and... You don't know which parent they're coming from, and you don't know which ones they're going to be, but they will be three different ones, so both parents can't pass down their attack. Each IV is a generated number between 0 and 31 in each stat, and at level 100, it increases the stat by that much. So the higher the number, if it's a 31 out of 31, then it increases your uh, stat by 31. 
So obviously we want all 31s on this Machop. Now I'm not going to be sitting here breeding for that because getting three random ones passed down and the three generated randomly and trying to get all 31s would take forever. Additionally, we have no way of officially checking right now. You can't do that until later in the game. So um, that's not going to be something that we're factoring in, just the nature um, and the egg moves. But um, beyond just the nature and the egg moves, we can also factor in the fact that this uh, Machop is going to be um, a certain ability. Now you can pass down your the ability of the parent, or you can get the other one. It's a, I think in this game it's 50-50, in later games the mother has a higher chance of passing down her ability as she does to giving a birth to a baby with a different ability. So we are going to be looking at that as well. And IVs... Um, in later games are manipulated by having the Pokemon uh, holding a Destiny Knot. Destiny Knot will allow the Pokemon, it doesn't matter which parent, the parents will pass down five of the IVs between them. It again is random which parent is going to pass down which IVs, but instead of getting three stats uh, generated, ran generated by the parents, then you get five. So if both parents have 31s and everything, then uh, five th there will be five 31s on the baby, and that's a big deal. So, um, because it makes it so much easier to randomly get one stat generated as a 31 as it does to get three stats generated as a 31. Um, and so, in later games, you can use the Destiny Knot trick. In this game, if there's a specific stat that you know is really good and you want to pass that down, you can use the power items to have that passed down to the baby um, and get that baby. So, like, then if you know the attack stat's good, and you want the attack, you can use the corresponding power item and put it in the PC in the daycare, and it will pass down its specifically attack stat, and that parent will pass down that one stat. The other two will still be given randomly. So that's how long it takes to hatch an egg. I can explain all of IVs, all of natures and abilities and all that stuff. And you can see that a Machop is going to hatch from the egg because we had our female Machop in the daycare. So every time I hatch a Machop, I am going to be taking a look at it to see what nature it has. Now this first one is special in the sense that we are going to be swapping out the parents in the daycare. So this one is a bashful nature, but you can see uh, it has Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, and Bullet Punch. Those are the moves we wanted on it, so those are the moves that it's going to have because that's what the Machamp- uh, the, my gosh, I keep saying Machamp. The Hitmonchan had. And so we are looking for a bashful nature. Um, we are not looking for- um, a specific ability right now. I'll worry about that a little bit later. But if I happen to get the one with the right ability, that'd be cool. Um, this one is Guts. Guts is a good ability, but it is uh, potentially not the ability that I want. Um, if I find one that happens to be very good and has Guts, I will keep that one and we will just adjust the final moveset. But the other ability that Machamp gets um, is a lot of fun to play with and I want to use it. So... Um, that's the one we're going to be going with. So at this point, we're just going to uh, take everything out, put this in, and uh, the reason we have to take everything out is because we're taking both Pokemon out of the daycare. And so I'll be right back once I've swapped the Pokemon all out of the daycare and brought the eggs back into my party. All right, guys, we have a party full of eggs. We have our Magmar, and we are going to be running up and down again. So... Um, I was going to keep switching that Machop out, but given how broke that I am, I probably am not going to do that now. Um, I, I didn't realize how little money we had. Uh, not a big deal. I, I spent a lot of it on balls, um, so it's my fault, but it is what it is. And so that Machop will be sitting there, and that Ditto will be sitting there for a while. Um, one thing is that, as, as I said before, the Pokemon that levels up in the daycare does not keep its egg moves, but it will keep breeding down its egg moves as long as you don't take it out of the daycare. So that Machop will, when I take it out, probably not have the egg moves anymore, but every egg that comes out of the daycare will have the egg moves. So it doesn't matter how what level the Machop is, it can stay in there. They changed this in Gen 7 such that the Pokemon does not level up in the daycare. Um, so <laughs> Modest Nature is exactly ex the opposite of what I want. But No Guard is the ability that I want. So I would switch out that Machop to get this, put this one in there and get a more likely chance of getting No Guard. Um, but since I'm okay with Guts, as an ability, I'm just going to leave the other one in there, and I'm also broke. So, um, so the way that this works is every time you get a Pokemon hatched out of the box, put it in the PC and open up another slot for another Pokemon. Um, from here on out, I will not be opening up my menu to check their ability. I'll be checking it here when I actually bring them into the box. 
Um, and we're just going to be putting them in box 18. And uh, so you can see that I can see the ability right there. And that's what I'll be doing from here on out until we find an adamant one that either has no guard or guts. And that's the way this works. That's how you breed. I will be cutting to, uh, or hope Dan will be cutting. I don't know if he'll be speeding up or cutting, but uh, we will be showing you guys every egg that hatches on the way and all their abilities as I put them back in the PC. Breeding, I understand, can be a monotonous project. Breeding can be brutal. I have had, so you should have a one out of 25 chance of getting the nature that you're looking for. And I have had projects uh, including one of the later ones that you guys will see of a Pokemon that we're going to be bringing into the series later, um, in which it took me over 80 eggs to get the correct nature. And that was a time in which I was okay with either of two natures, which should be two out of 25, or a 12.5% chance, uh, not 12.5%, or one out of 12.5 chance that um, it, it comes out of the egg. So every 13 eggs I should have gotten one. It took me 86 eggs to get that. So... That's not what we're looking for right now. And given the number of encounters it took, I'm not so excited for the prospect of the future of how long this is gonna take, but you never know. Uh, it could be this egg. And that's the thing about breeding, it could be this egg. Um, nope, Calm. So, Calm is minus attack plus special defense. So all these Machops are going to be minus attack natures. Not good, not good, not good, not good. Um, now, one thing is that because that Hitmonchan was traded, it made it really easy to breed and, like, really likely to have an egg. Um, uh, and so that w meant that he'd have more eggs for me. In this case, uh, the Pokemon don't like each other very much. So there's four different messages he can say there. They like each other a lot. Um, they don't like each other much. They uh, some There's one more breeding one, and then there's one that's like they prefer to play with other Pokemon. If it's they prefer to play with other Pokemon, it means they are not in the same egg group. And I can explain a little bit about egg groups now. So egg groups are um, the different Pokemon are all sorted into groups of Pokemon that are capable of breeding with one another. So Hitmonchan and Machop are in the same egg group. And Ditto is an egg group called the Amorphous Egg Group, I believe, and is just a breedable with anything. Um, Whereas, um, let's say, Machop and Dratini are not in the same egg group. You could not breed them even if you wanted the moves on them. So um, there's, like, I don't even know how many different egg groups. And they all have different things. They're all sort of um, related to what the Pokemon look like and their stature and occasionally their type. Um, although typing is not a perfect metric of egg groups and stuff. Um, but... Sassy is not the ability we're looking for, in the nature, excuse me. Um, although we have hatched three no guard ones, which is interesting. That's from the original Machop and Hitmonchan. Um, come on, have an egg for me. I'm running out of eggs in my party. Uh, aha! Egg! Give me my egg, give me my egg, give me my egg, give me my egg. Yes, I want it. And so, um, in newer generations of Pokemon, they've actually put in some spots to infinitely loop so that you can, so breeding is made much easier so you don't have to keep changing the direction on the D-pad. Obviously, that was not the case in this game, as you can tell. Um, and yes, I want the egg. Um, the sooner you give me an egg, the sooner the egg hatches. Now, another thing about breeding that is not oft- discussed in uh, Pokemon Let's Plays would be this thing called the Masuda method of breeding. The Masuda method of breeding was introduced, I believe, in Gen 4, but possibly earlier, and is a... The justification that he gives for it is that he wanted to have um, different regions trading Pokemon more. So if you have two Pokemon from different regions, for instance, one is J Japanese and one is American, one is from your game, one is from a Spanish game, whatever, um then you can, the two Pokemon have a significantly higher chance of breeding a shiny Pokemon. And obviously we're not doing that. We don't have access to a Japanese cartridge of our gold and soul silver. So we do not have a shiny or a Japanese ditto or anything like that. Um, but that's the way that Masuda method works. It just gives you a higher chance of breeding a shiny. Um, I 
breeding is always a you know every pokemon that hatches can be shiny but they are exactly the same odds as any other pokemon that has like in the wild to be a shiny so um, that is the same hitmonchan that was used to help get the egg moves onto the elekid just for a uh, fun fact right there so that hothead has the same father as machop well machop's father is no longer him on our no longer hitmonchan but originally it was um same source of egg moves now if you are trying to breed competitively then you're gonna want to uh, be swapping in the better ivs every single time so you always want to check with the iv judge um what the ivs of the pokemon are so that you can, if you can the more ivs that are correct between the ditto and the parent um the more likely you are that the baby is going to come out with the correct ivs it needs um so if you are breeding competitively make sure you're checking with him every single time you have an egg um the nature is manipulatable you can breed the same nature onto an egg that you have as a parent the destiny knot passes down five ivs the everstone you give a pokemon an everstone like the non-evolution everstone that's when it'll pass down uh its nature so you give the pokemon the everstone that you want to have the nature and you give the destiny knot to the ditto and then you'll be passing down five ivs per baby and getting the nature that you want every single time it's a 100 percent chance of passing down the nature if it's holding an everstone now there's one more mechanic to breeding that admittedly i have very little experience in and it's called hidden power breeding because the hidden power of the pokemon which is a move that is uh it's a tm that you get and it is a move that depends on the stats of the pokemon it is fully dependent on the ivs of the pokemon the six ivs put together combine to make some value and that value is determines your hidden power hidden power can be any one of the 18 types with the exception of normal and in the new games including fairy and um in this game obviously there's only 17 types and it's 16 of the 17 types it can't be normal again and the pokemon will it will be determined by their ivs so if you are hidden power breeding you need to make sure you have the correct ivs um and that's much much harder than just determining if you have the best ivs because the iv judge will only tell you what the best iv stat of your pokemon is he'll tell you all the stats that match the highest stat that you have so if they're all 31 he'll name every single one and say they're all the best and that means they're all 31 but if they're if you need some that aren't 31 it's much much harder to determine there is a person who will tell you your pokemon's hidden power but that's the best you can do as far as figuring out uh, if you have the correct ivs for hidden power that's a very difficult breeding process i'm not going to worry about it too much ever um i choose not to ever breed for hidden powers because they're so frustrating Storage system, move Pokemon. Relax. So you guys are getting a good sight at all the different possible abilities that they can be. And as of right now, I have no control over the ability that it's going to be. Would I like to nickname the newly hatched Machop? No. Dan will be nicknaming his newly hatched Machop later. It's a gentle Machop. So you can see they all have the egg moves, right? Uh, you can't see from this screen, but if I scroll down them, you can see uh, they all have the same egg moves on them. Uh, all the different natures that they have. And um, no matter how long I leave the other Machop in the daycare, they will all continue to have those egg moves on them, even though that Machop is currently leveling up and learning new moves. I don't know how long it's been for you guys, but here we go, it's the eighth egg. A part of me is like really kind of secretly hoping that we find a shiny, not expecting it, but kind of secretly hoping, um, because that'd be super fun to play with throughout the playthrough. Um, I've been kind of hoping it with everything and haven't, obviously haven't found one yet. Uh, they are really rare in this game. It's a one, 000, 1 in 8,192 chance that you find a shiny Pokemon in the new game. Aha! Adamant. But I do kind of want it to be adamant with no guard. So we're going to keep searching for now. It's a Machop. Yay. Uh, which we were going to do later. But uh, it'll make this process so much less frust. Never mind. I was going to say less frustrating, but here we go. 
Uh, Adamant, no guard, Machop. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, no guard is an interesting ability that makes sure that every move hits always from both Pokemon, whether it's on you or f like attacking them or from them on you. They'll never miss. Um, so that opens up some interesting options for Machop to make sure he c can use moves that don't have 100% accuracy because they will always have 100% accuracy. However, all the moves he has right now, as we can see, Thunder Punch, Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and Bullet Punch, obviously that's not the order, um, are 100% accurate. So not worried about it yet, but that took a lot shorter time than expected, but that's the way breeding can go sometimes. You have no idea how long breeding is going to take. It's going to be a process where you just go until you get the right Pokemon, and then you go from there. And I am really quickly going to do something. I will be right back, everyone, and then... Uh, we will check to make sure that this is an acceptable Machop to use. Alright guys, so we are going to be using this Machop. It is a male Machop, and that's that's awesome. He's got, uh, his stats are impossible to tell what they're at right now, but, uh, and we don't have access to the IV judge, so I can't actually know what his IVs are, but we will um, potentially try to check on some of those in the future. So this is the team. The team is starting to come together, guys. We have Hothead, Melody, Merlin, and... Uh, Machop. So I will be right back and uh, show you guys what we're going to do with this Machop in the future. So give us one second. Let's I'll bring the chair. Hmm, that is a decent nickname. But I can give it a nicer name. How about it? That doesn't inspire confidence. That's That was a lot of a question. What shall the new nickname be? Uh, so as you can see, we have your actual player two here. Hey. Um, I did all of the explanation for this video, but it is his <clears throat> playthrough and his Machop to use. Now it's a male Machop. Okay. Um, so that's something to consider, uh, potentially, or, you know, not, whatever. <laughs> He's the mailman. This is I'm, your I'm doing playthrough. <laughs> uh, now on this Pokemon shall be known as Mailman. Uh, good for you. Good for you. See, he appreciates me. So would you like to take a look? All the people have seen your, your Machop sure. already, but you actually have not. Sure. Mailman. So there's an Adamant Machop, which is plus physical attack minus special attack. Perfect. Yep. Huh! And has Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Fire Punch, and Bullet Punch. How about cry? <laughs> All for you. And it has No Guard. Now, the ability No Guard, Dan, is interesting. Um, no Guard is an ability that makes it so your Pokemon, your Pokemon's attacks, and their Pokemon's attacks will never miss. So nothing will ever miss Machop. Machop will never miss an opponent. Huh. High risk, high reward. Opens up some really interesting moves down the line. For instance, Machop gets a move that is 50% accurate, that has a stab fighting type move with 100 base power and always confuses your opponent. <laughs> He'll never miss it. You okay? <laughs> so that's why I wanted to have no guard. Huh. Um, so this didn't take nearly as long as I was expecting. Cool. But that is all we have planned for this episode, everybody. So we have our fourth team member, Dan is back, and uh, next episode, I promise, it will not be just me blathering on about stats you probably don't care about. So, with that, until next time, see you later.